Hello everyone. Welcome to the week 2 of strategic sales management. Here we will learn more about how to craft strategic sales plan. In this week, we are going to achieve several objectives. So after going through this module, you should be able to understand the place of selling in the overall marketing plan. You will be able to apply marketing principles for crafting strategic sales plan. We will learn more about sales forecasting methods to make informed decisions. We will also understand different tools that can be used for crafting strategic sales plan. And towards the end, we will learn about how to develop models for sales planning. Starting with the first objective, that is to understand the place of selling in the marketing plan. Let's look at what sales is all about, right? Sales is not about selling. So what it is all about? Let's have a look at this funny clip from one of the classic movie, which gives different perspective about what is selling in this particular era. आपके घर में मेहमान बैठे और सामने ये फूलदान पड़ा है अब मेहमान ने पूछा कि ये फूलदान कितने का लिया आप कहेंगे पांच रुपए का नहीं नहीं लेकिन मेहमान ये जानता है कि ये फूलदान हर फुटपाथ पे मिलता है अब बताइए आपकी नाक कटी या नहीं कटी हाँ इसीलिए मैं अपना सारा सामान डिपार्टमेंटल स्टोर से खरीदता हूँ लेकिन जब ये फूलदान फुटपाथ में पांच रुपए का मिलता है अरे फुटपाथ के फूलदान में स्टोर के फूलदान में कोई फर्क नहीं होता क्या फर्क होता है फूलदान फूलदान है आपके घर में कुत्ता है कौन सा पामरेरियन आप पामरेरियन क्यों पालते हैं सड़क पर घूमता हुआ पिल्ला क्यों नहीं पालते क्योंकि पामरेरियन और सड़क पर घूमते पिल्लों में फर्क होता है बिल्कुल वैसे ही स्टोर के फूलदान में और फुटपाथ के फूलदान में भी फर्क होता है समझे <laughs> इसीलिए तो मैं अपना सारा सामान डिपार्टमेंटल स्टोर से ही खरीदता हूँ फूलदान फुटपाथ पे पांच रुपए का मिलता है अरे पांच रुपए वाला फूलदान टूट जाता है अरे टूट तो तीन सौ वाला भी जाता है तीन सौ वाला नहीं टूटता जब पांच वाला टूटेगा तो तीन सौ वाला भी टूटेगा नहीं टूटेगा टूटेगा नहीं टूटेगा अरे मैं कहता हूँ टूटेगा नहीं टूटेगा ठीक है मैं तोड़कर दिखाता हूँ दिखाओ पहले लाओ अब तीन सौ वाला दो पहले तीन सौ रुपए निकालो क्या मतलब अरे जनाब पहले इसे खरीदिए अगर टूट गया तो कौन जिम्मेदार होगा <laughs> ये तीन सौ रुपए लो और अब तुम्हें दिखाता हूं ये कैसे टूटता है ए? नहीं, नहीं ये, ये तो ये तो मैंने तीन सौ देकर खरीदा था <laughs> इसीलिए ये टूट नहीं सकता जनाब महंगी चीजें टूटने में दुख होता है और फुटपाथ की चीज टूटने से इतना दुख नहीं होता क्योंकि वो सस्ती होती है इसीलिए मैं अपना सामान डिपार्टमेंटल स्टोर से खरीदता हूँ भाई तुमने तो मेरी आंखें खोल दी नो नो इट्स माय ड्यूटी ये लो इसे बांधो पैसे तो मैं तुम्हें दे चुका हूँ लेके जाइएगा थैंक यू अरे वाह राजा तुम क्या सेल्समैन हो मेरा जी करता है कि मैं अपना सारा सा होप यू हैव एंजॉयड दिस वीडियो इट्स बिट फनी बट इट इज नॉट द वे वन शुड अप्रोच टू सेल्स राइट सो सेल्स मे बी काइंड ऑफ यू नो टेकन एज ऑलवेज बी क्लोजिंग काइंड ऑफ एटीट्यूड बट इट्स नॉट इट्स रॉन्ग वन कैन अंडरस्टैंड सेल्स एज अ प्रोसेस ऑफ सेलिंग एनीथिंग टू एनी वन एंड टू हेल्प विद द कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज इफ दिस इज वॉट यू थिंक द सेल्स इज दिस इज ऑल्सो अ रॉन्ग डेफिनेशन Another approach towards sales is that it is something about persuading someone to buy, right? But no, this is again wrong. So what is selling then, right? Now imagine a particular customer walks into a showroom to buy a car and the particular salesperson who is handling the kind of sales for that particular car is very well trained to manage the kind of, you know, customers and approach to him you know, started with a given pitch, which talks about specifications, mileage of the car, speed of the car, etc. Here, however, the particular salesperson completely kind of, you know, ignores a previous experience of the buyer, the previous cars he has owned, 
then the buying motivation which with he has come to visit the place and again finally the purchase journey like exactly where the particular customers is at particular purchase journey in his buying cycle so planned communication personalized communication that influences purchase decisions to ensure customer satisfaction if you combine all these four things together that is where we call it as a selling so then what is marketing then it looks very similar to marketing right but the marketing is the activity set of institutions and processes for creating communicating delivering and exchanging value to the customers so how does sales relate to marketing so originally marketing was part of the sales organization right but as the organization has increased the range of products and services it sells to large number of different types of customers that has resulted into a separation of these two functions sales and marketing this separation cause increasing competition between sales and marketing functions and departments and this competition increase for resources and dominance within the organization itself so the sales and marketing may be aiming for the same objectives of creating customer value and increasing sales and profits they usually have independent targets have developed individual behaviors and have completely different cultures as well so now look at the functions that are carried out by these two different functions marketing versus sales marketing usually has the responsibility for market research communications with both customers and consumers attracting new customers and managing the brand as well this function is generally focused on informing the market as well as setting the achieving longer term objectives as well the sales function on the other hand has the responsibility for managing personal interaction with the customers negotiation with the customers gaining sales and even gathering market information as well so sales are in a direct communication with customers and they are more likely to focusing on shorter term objectives whereas marketing generally focuses on long term objectives now just have a look at the sales organization how the company organization varies across two different companies one which is having a sales orientation and another which is called as a marketing oriented company so here is the sales oriented company where there are different functions like production finance hr sales purchase r and d and manufacturing and within the sales director we have regional teams so regional manager a regional manager b and c and other things whereas the marketing actually functions as a kind of you know assistive function in the particular company and then below the every regional manager we have area managers and then the team of sales representatives now coming to the next type of organization which is marketing oriented organization here a marketing services actually feeds as a kind of support system to all the sales managers which are in the sales office and then sales team has its own hierarchy like area managers and representatives catering to different markets based on either geo geographic territories or either catering to the different product categories as well then how does sales relate to marketing the end product of the marketing and sales are entirely different in marketing the goal is to make prospect leads and potential customers while on the other hand the sales team try to achieve the conversion right so they want to achieve those conversions into a customers the potential customers into an actual purchase customers so marketing is a process which is aimed in influencing the purchase decision of the consumer by getting into their head on educating the customers to like the brand while selling is exactly about persuading the customers to purchase certain products through its benefits and features through one to one interactions so marketing is creating a brand relevant to a specific target group of customers selling is interacting and proactively asking an individual customers to consider the product and services meant for them so selling process starts from the factory whereas the marketing starts from target group so that's the basic fundamental difference between these two functions going ahead throughout last two eras there is a friction between these two functions within organizations and there are two types of frictions that can be documented one is economic friction friction and another one is cultural friction in economic friction we are mostly talking about the three p's of marketing that is price promotion and product whereas the price related to price the marketing group is under pressure to achieve revenue goals and wants the sales force to sell the price instead of selling through the price right the sales people usually favor lower prices because that makes them easy for them to close the sales so they don't want to go ahead with the prices that are given by the marketing domain or marketing department 
When it's coming to promotions, the marketing group needs to spend a lot of money to generate customer awareness, interests, and preferences for the particular product or brand. Whereas a CEO of a sales department or a regional manager of sales department will think exactly opposite of this. He thinks that this money would be better spent on increasing the size and quality of the sales force that can ultimately add to the bottom line of the company. In terms of product, the marketing team is concerned about releasing products whose features are, have broad appeal, appealing to the mass market or appealing to a specific segment that is being selected. Whereas salespeople, however, often complain that there is a lack of feature, style or quality of their customers that is demanded in those such products. So the products that are created or you know kind of innovated from marketing function may not you know kind of you know sellable to the ultimate customers. So that's kind of an economic friction that continuously happens between sales and marketing people or functions as well. Coming to cultural friction, there is again a difference between how these two functions acts. So marketers who until recently had more formal education than salespeople are, are highly analytical, data oriented and project focused. So marketers are all about building competitive advantage for the future. So their focus is more into the future, bringing the long term revenues for the company or for the brand as well. Marketers judge their project's performance with a cold eye and they are ruthless with a failed kind of you know, initiatives. Whereas exactly controversy to this, salespeople in contrast spend their time talking to existing and potential customers. They are skilled at relationship building. They are not only savvy about customers willingness to buy but also attuned to which product features will fly and which will die. So the salespeople want to keep moving. They are used to rejection and it doesn't depress them as well. So they live for closing a sale. So there is a different kind of cultural approach each person which is employed in a particular domain, whether it's marketing or sales, they bring the different kind of culture to the organization. And that's why there is a cultural friction between these two functions or the, the people who are working in these two functions as well. Coming to the types of relationships then. So Kotler et al. in 2006 HBR article talks about four different kinds of relationship that exist between sales and marketing departments. The first of kind is undefined, where sales and marketing have grown independently each is preoccupied largely with its own task and agendas. Each group doesn't know much about what the other group is up to and which usually results into a lot of conflicts and they usually meet or their meetings are usually held only to resolve these conflicts. Second category is defined relationships where the two groups marketing and sales set up processes and rules to prevent disputes. So there is a good fences makes good neighbors kind of an attitude or orientation. The marketers and salespeople know who is supposed to do what and they stick to their own task for the most of the part. Coming to the third category of relationship which is kind of you know aligned where sales and marketing departments are aligned with each other. So they have clear boundaries between them but they are flexible to work with each other. So the group engage in joint planning and training. The sales group understands and uses marketing terminology such as value proposition and brand image and marketers confer with salespeople on important accounts as well. So it's most like their functions or day-to-day -day activities that they, they may take into each other's territory as well. Whereas the last and important category which is also rarely find in organization is integrated relationship between sales and marketing. Here the boundaries become blurred. Both groups redesign and relationship re redesign the relationship to share structure, systems, and rewards as well. So marketing and to a lesser degree sales begins to focus on strategic forward thinking types of tasks like you know market sensing, gathering market information, uh, planning for the new products as well. So marketers are deeply embedded in the management of key accounts. So the key account management is usually where both sales and marketing people will work together right from starting to identifying the lead up to the conversion and even after that going up to sales after sales service as well. So the two groups develop and implement shared matrices to evaluate their performances. Coming to the next. So if you look at the overall process of how sales happens. So it starts with getting identifying a prospect, a potential prospect, converting it into a lead and then converting that lead into a customer. So usually marketing functions at the first stage that is between converting the prospect into a lead, a quality lead. 
A marketing aims to attract quality prospects through the creation and distribution of targeted content where we know nowadays that we are using content marketing tools and the content is created across many different channels and it is shared with the customers. This content will build the trust of the prospect until they eventually become a lead. And once the lead is kind of you know qualified, it is being passed to the sales department. Then the sales team took the lead into a forward stages. So these leads will then be nurtured by sales where a one is to one relationship is built between a salesperson and a particular lead or a customer. And then sales will address the specific needs of customers providing tailored solution. So identifying needs of a particular customer, they propose different solutions to identify or to approach to those problems or issues faced by the customers. So the ultimate aim of sales is to convert those leads into customers and win their loyalty so that they become a kind of you know, loyal customer for the company. But overall, if we look at this, both these functions, marketing and sales across the funnel or stages, they share the common goal, acquisition and conversion of leads. So how to go ahead with achieving that kind of a goal? So what is the benefit if sales and marketing works together? So there are different benefits. First one is increased quality of leads. Sales can support marketers to recognize the ideal customer persona for the business so that marketing can then work on attracting that customer. So by aligning the operation of the two departments and facilitating effective communications between sales and marketing, the business can become more profitable. Another benefit is access to valuable information. Sales team that builds personal relationship with customers will have valuable information which can contribute to marketing. For example, the qu frequently asked questions by customers. It's not something which marketers will come into contact with, right? So it's a salesperson who is continuously interacting with customers on the field. They know what are the most kind of, you know, frequently faced questions or doubts or queries by the customer. So then they can bring those FAQs to the marketing team and then marketing team can actually use that information, feed that information into their kind of, you know, content that is created to approach those answers or to questions or to approach those questions faced by customers. This will empower prospect to make smarter decisions as well. Third benefit is improved business metrics. The effective collaboration of sales and marketing departments can help to improve key business metrics. So for example, it may reduce the cost per sale or it may also result in reduction in sales cycle duration as well. Fourth benefit is beating the competition. So marketing department often pride themselves to knowing exactly what the competition is doing. By feeding this information into the sales team, new tactics can be designed to accelerate your business ahead of your closest competitors. So here exactly how marketing is also can be you know, beneficial to the sales team functions, right? So anything information about competition that is generated through marketing, that is through tools like market research or social listening nowadays, can be given or transferred to sales team so that they can design their sales, speech, sales speeches accordingly so as to meet the or the close the deals as well. Going ahead, how to make sales and marketing works together? So yes, we know the benefits of having these two functions working together, but how to do that? First is to open the communication line between the two departments. Try combining your sales and marketing team meetings giving the department an insight into you know, each other's work, how they are doing particular task. You may be surprised at the knowledge that is shared between the two teams once they hear each other's success and begin to understand each other's challenges as well. Second is to combine funnels. Try combining your sales and marketing funnels into one long funnel. This will allow you to see the workflow including where processes align as well as envisioning the shared goals that unite both departments. So it is something which is again that we saw with relation to having you know a single funnel where both marketing and sales team personnel can join hands together. Third, collaborate. So when sales and marketing are thought of two completely separate departments, their processes will rarely align, right? So however, there is a lot of knowledge that can be shared between these two teams or these two functions to simplify processes and bring new insights. So that leads to a completion of the first objective that's how a particular what is the place of selling in the overall marketing plan and how the sales and marketing functions relates to each other.